today I want to show you guys exactly how I connect my home studio, but not just how to connect a home studio, but how to connect a home studio like a professional studio. And I'll get into what I mean by that. Now, the idea of a home studio to me is somewhere in your home, a place you can go where you are inspired and able to create and perform and capture that performance without the technical side of things getting in the way of capturing that creativity. This could be audio or video, and in my case, it's both. So we'll use my home studio as an example. Now this room that I'm in now is my home studio and it's literally just a room above my garage. So that's the garage right there. And this is the room. Now really to understand how a studio is connected and how everything works, you have to understand something called signal flow. Performer comes into this studio and performs whether that's on drums, on piano, or they're singing, they perform into a microphone, that's the input, and then through all of the processes it goes through, it outputs from the speakers so we can listen to it. Now more specifically, somebody comes in and performs. Let's say they do drums, or they do guitar, and it comes out of this guitar amp, it hits the microphone. The microphone can hear the sound, right? The microphone connects to a cable now these are called XLR cables. Anything that is an audio microphone cable is an XLR cable. The cable will take it to a box that has microphone preamps in it. The microphone preamp allows you to amplify the sound on the microphone and then you can dial in the exact level you need to have an optimal listening experience. Now after you get this magical level, you come out of the microphone preamp into an audio interface. We used to call this tape because it literally used to be tape that was recorded with magnets. But now it goes to a computer. But the way to get it to a computer is to use an audio interface. Now you don't need these expensive outboard preamps to be able to record. This is just how I do things in my studio. You could just get an audio interface that has built-in microphone preamps, like this one on the bottom here. This is an Apollo X8P. That stands for eight preamps. So this has eight built-in pre's inside of the interface. Now the interface just takes that audio and sends it right into your computer or laptop. Now a little PSA on audio interfaces and mic pre's and all of this stuff. Technically, you can get away with just getting a microphone and a very small audio interface and plugging it into your computer and being able to record. That's all you need. The technology has become so good that you don't need to have a ton of stuff. You don't need to buy all this stuff. And now more than ever, that is extremely common, even in a lot of professional writing and demo, and some cases even some big projects can and will just use a very simple setup like that. Honestly, it's amazing and we should celebrate that. I think that's fantastic. Now, if you're a masochist like me and you want to just have an insane amount of stuff that you have to deal with and manage, well, let me show you how we do that. Now, in my case, I do have a lot of external microphone preamps because I believe that the microphone preamp significantly changes the quality of whatever's being sent into it. And there's a lot of different flavors, I'll call them, of microphone preamps. So I've collected a bunch of the ones that I love. Now this magnificent thing is my studio desk. This desk is filled with these racks. These racks hold my external hardware. Now, the desk has three racks inside of it. Each rack holds eight rack spaces. 
So this is one rack space. So each square rack here holds eight single rack space units. This is a sidecar. This is basically an extension for the desk that has an additional eight rack spaces. Between both sidecars and the desk, I have a total of 40 rack unit spaces here. So the thing here is my desk and sidecars are actually full. So I've taken everything that was in the desk out of the desk that I don't need accessible at my fingertips. And I've put it over here. This is cool because you get to see what actually connects to everything behind the desk and the racks. Now, a lot of times when people see you know, the gear like this in studios, it's pretty cool and often confusing. People see it and they go, wow, that looks very complicated. Uh, I am here to assure you it's not. This is what's actually going in and out of this box here. This is it. This is our power. Let's turn it on. Over here, we have our inputs. So there are two microphone preamps in this box. So we've got an input for channel one and an input for channel two. And then here we have our outputs. Channel one, channel two. Microphone goes in, you turn up the preamp, it gets louder. You come out of the preamp and you go to another thing. But a preamp is all you need to be able to use a microphone and record. You don't need external preamps unless you're obsessed and you wanna have a super professional setup. Then you can get external pre's. Okay, now that I've shown you the simple concept of signal flow, I'm gonna show you how the signal flow works in my kind of studio, which is much more complicated and uh, uh, far more uh, costly, way more. This is the expensive way of connecting things. Okay, so this next part is going to go over the signal flow of most pro and commercial studios. Um, heads up, it's a little technical. Not the most entertaining thing in the entire world, but it is very informative. So hang in there and it, it, you'll, you, you might learn a thing or you maybe you already know it, but just so you know. All right, so now for how I run and connect everything in my home studio like a professional or commercial studio would. Okay, so we're gonna go back to phase one. The source, the instrument or the performer plays. We put microphones on them. Microphones go to the cable. The cables run around to the mic line box. I have it so that it's tucked away, kind of unseen, so that the floor in the whole studio is clean. It goes along the wall, behind the desk, tucked away into these snakes. So I've kind of got these tidied up, hoping to tidy them up even more. But all of the mic lines now run into my patch bay. So the patch bay is where everything goes. I mean everything. Every microphone, every tie line, every mic pre in the studio, every piece of outboard gear, all of the inputs and outputs to and from my audio interface, everything to this summing mixer, everything to and from the headphone monitoring station goes to these patch bays. So there's a total of three patch bays here. Each one serves a specific purpose. The first patch bay is all of the line. So every microphone is coming in to this top patch bay. It's coming in here. And then the second patch bay is all of my outboard gear. So all of my external mic pre's, if I have any compressors or EQs, they're all on the second patch bay. So I go microphone to mic pre, out of mic pre, Back to the first one, because this half is all inputs and outputs to my interface. Let's do that again. Microphones go out into the second patch bay, which are all external mic pre's and outboard gear. You go into that, and then out of that, 
into the interface, which then goes to the computer. The third patch bay is a new one, and this is just connected to this guy. This is another external input and output situation. This is a summing mixer from Burl. Now we're gonna get into that in another video, but that's what the third patch bay is for. Now, for example, in the second patch bay, all of the external inputs and outputs currently are going to all of the gear that's in my desk. And just like I showed you on the back of the mic pre, everything has an one input and one output. So everything is sent to the back of each one of these, and then it returns from the output back to the same patch bay. And we go input, output, coming out of the output into the interface. But everything is here. So I can just take a cable if I wanna move things around, or I wanna try a different piece of gear, or I've changed where my mics are, or I'm coming into a different panel. This is basically the control station. So that's how everything gets inputted and outputted to and from the computer from the performer or the source. I also have outputs from my interfaces that one, come to the top patch bay, like I mentioned, but there's another set of outputs going to this grace. The grace is my reference monitor controller. The grace has all of the inputs that I can use for monitoring and the outputs to my speakers. And the reason it looks like there's nothing on the front of this box is because on the back, everything goes to and from this unit, including a remote. The remote runs through here up to my desk to this guy. This is how I control everything that I hear. I have three speaker sets that I can jump to, one, two, and three. And then I also have a separate sub mute for my subwoofer. Obviously I have a whole mute, master mute. You've got a dim and a mono. You also have a second cute. And then you can switch between your inputs here. So I have balanced analog inputs. And then I have a second balanced analog input from my summing mixer. And then I have a third unbalanced analog input for an aux. So at the end of all the signal, everything goes to that and then out of my speakers so that I can work. Now the last element here of connecting things are these headphone boxes. These headphone boxes connect via ethernet on the back and that gives them power and audio. Now these have 16 channels of analog audio that can play through them that you can output and monitor individually and switch through and make your own mix on each individual headphone box. I have these scattered around the room depending on where you're sitting and what you're doing, you have your own box that you can set your own mix for. Now the way to get audio to that box is from this box. This box is the master module which sends the ethernet signal to each individual box. On the back, you have two different ways to input audio. There are 16 quarter inch analog inputs and then you have two ADAT optical inputs. Currently I'm using both. I'm using eight analog inputs for the first eight channels. And then I'm taking the nine through 16 channels from optical input via ADAT from my interface. Now, without getting into too much of the nitty gritty of IO on this interface, I can basically send line out eight channels from this interface via ADAT to the headphone boxes. So between the ADAT and the line inputs, I'm getting 16 channels of audio to be able to go to each headphone box from this module. So I've been doing a big sort of turnaround in this room and uh, I figured I'd take advantage of that process to show you how things are connected in my studio. And I've basically taken the template from commercial studios that I've worked at and tried to implement them in my home studio because I am just obsessed with having an outrageous amount of stuff. I wanna have a room that operates in a specific way. This is probably not applicable to most home studios, but if you are trying to figure out how to connect things in your room, hopefully this was the very least helpful for you to understand signal flow, or if you are wanting to do 
you know, grow into a different kind of operation, then maybe this helps you at least understand how I'm doing things. Uh, let me know what you guys think and how you're doing your own stuff down in the comments. Uh, and of course, thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Everything that I have in this room, I put into a list. It's a crazy list. So if you're curious, you can go through that, click that link and just if you're looking for something, it's in there, I promise. Also, I wanna shout out this new DI box I got. A DI box is probably not the most sexy thing in the entire world, but we all need them. And this is a new one for me. It is very, very cool. I just used it for the first time recently. It's made by Rupert Neve Designs and it is an active DI box. So you actually have to send phantom power to this box for it to turn on. Uh, you've got obviously your speaker input and instrument input, you're through. XLR output and you know your ground lift. Rupert Neve Designs has really figured some stuff out and I was referred or recommended this by my friend Jake Reed. By the way, if you haven't followed his channel, you definitely should. He uses this on a few things in his studio. It sounds really great. I just ran my P-Bass through it. Obviously the P-Bass already sounds good, but it's, a, it's cool to have different colors of stuff if you're looking for it. And this box sounds really good. So I'll put a link to it down in the description. Again, thank you Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you in the next one.